Judges chapter 18 is where we started. Now, what I'm going to be preaching about this evening goes hand in hand with what I preached this morning, right? This morning was uh, those great victories and mighty men and, and being ambitious for 2021 and really wanting to do a lot of work. And in order for that to work, the, what, what I'm going to be preaching on tonight, we need to make sure we have a grip on and we have a hold on. And this is something I preached on even earlier this year and is something that I think it can happen to all of us, something we get trapped by, and that's laziness, or what the Bible calls slothfulness, okay? Everybody, everybody, everybody can be impacted by this. It's something that's very easy in our physical nature to want to get lazy, to want to not do anything. And I think especially now, like at this time of year, is marked by, and I don't want to say, look, there's a time to relax. There's a time to take a break. There's a time to have a Sabbath. There's a time to enjoy. Okay, there is a time and a place for that. So I don't want to just get on like, oh man, on Christmas Day you like relaxed or took a nap or something like you're just super lazy. <laughs> That's not where I'm going with this. Okay, there's there's a there's a difference between you know taking a break and and being lazy. Okay, and be but here's the thing. It, it doesn't take much. To start getting lazy you enjoy the rest and it can be very easy to start slipping into laziness okay because let's face it it feels good sometimes to do nothing <laughs> and to just relax and lay down but it can become a curse if it makes you a lazy person so a few different ways we're going to apply this this evening. Obviously, it's kind of a broad subject. But look down in Judges chapter 18. In Judges 18, there's a lot of weird things going on. Um, we already went through this in our Wednesday night Bible study. There wasn't, um, there wasn't a king in the land. Everyone did that which is right in their own eyes. And, and, there's a, so in, and as a result, not from the lack of a king, but just everyone just kind of doing what's right in their own eyes. Turned into a lot of people doing a lot of things that just weren't quite right. But there was a phrase here, there's a statement made, and we're going to look at verses 8 and 9. And this is actually true and good, um, because the children of Israel, during the, the time of the judges, were supposed to be inhabiting the land that Moses had, had led them to, and Joshua brought them into, right, the, into, the, into the promised land. But even then, when they should have just conquered the land and gone into it, there's still a lot of places where they hadn't fully inherited their inheritance. They hadn't fully occupied their inheritance, and there was still the, the people of the land that were in there, and they were being uh, procrastinating and getting in and, and just taking their land. And look at verse number 8, the Bible says, And, and they came unto their brethren to Zor and Eshdael, and their brethren said unto them, What say ye? And this is like, I forget exactly how many, and so it was like five people or something came up to, uh, to their brethren and, it's, uh, and they say, well, what say ye? Verse 9 says, And they said, Arise, that, ye may, that we may go up against them. For we have seen the land, and behold, it is very good. And are ye still? Be not slothful to go and to enter to possess the land. So they're exhorting their brethren, saying, Look, why are you guys just still? Why are you sitting here and doing nothing? The, the, the land is ripe for the taking. The Lord has given this to us. The people of the land are just at ease. They're sitting there like, Let's go in and possess the land. This is what God's given us. Let's get up and not be slothful to go. So this morning I was preaching on the mighty man and he's asked, look, that, none of that's going to happen if you're slothful to go and do anything. If you just get too lazy, too comfortable, just, just day in, day out, having no, you know, everything's just real easy. You're just living on easy street. Okay, you need to be challenged. You need to be able to push yourself. You need to push yourself to do. Okay, and I'm not even saying do more. I'm just saying to do because that's where laziness comes in. Obviously, we want to do as much as we can. And that's why we do like extra challenges and things to try to try to get us motivated to do even more where laziness comes in. It's not the doing the more to like the max. Laziness is just where you stop doing anything. Laziness comes in where people get used to not going to church. 
You might miss church because you're getting sick. You might miss church because you're quarantined. You might miss church for various reasons, right? Health problems, things come up. You visit family, you go do this, you go do that. You have this event happening. After a while, though, it just becomes a habit. And you get used to not doing something that you normally would do. And then what happens is, what are you going to replace that with? It takes effort to wake up in the morning. It takes effort to come to church. It takes effort to, to do all kinds of things. It's easier not to do them. You know, we're, try, we're going to try to read the whole entire New Testament next in January. That requires effort. That requires work. I mean, you've got you to fit that in. You've got to think about it. You've got to remember it. You've got to open up your Bible. You've got to sit there. You've got to read it. You've got to not do anything else but focus on doing that. It's a lot easier to just say, no, I'm not going to do that. Now, that's a challenge, but how about even just reading your Bible at all? It still requires effort and work. You've got to open up. You've got to sit down, take the time, read. Okay? We've got to make sure that we're not going to be lazy or slothful to go. And in this case, he's saying being slothful to go, be not slothful to go, to do what God's commanded you to do. Because right? God's commanded him to go in and inherit the land. We have a lot of things that God has, has commanded us to do. We need to make sure we're not lazy to go. But we're going to get into that in just a little bit. Turn back, if you would, to the book of Pro Turn forward to, to the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs. And we're going to specifically be looking at chapter 12 right now. We're going to learn a little bit about slothfulness from the book of Proverbs. So that we cannot be slothful. Proverbs 12, verse number 24, the Bible reads, The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. Diligent means you're on top of things. You're making sure things get done. That's being diligent. And you know what? The hand of the diligent is going to bear rule. Even wicked people... Right? Like we have a lot of wicked politicians and a lot of wicked rulers. They are diligent. The vast majority of the people, you find yourself in politics, stuff, these people are driven and diligent in what they do. Now, what they, a lot of what they do is, is wrong and wicked and stuff, but a lot of those people that get into these offices and bear rule, they, they are, you know, they're driven. Or even just in business. You know, the people who are the CEOs and the, and the people who are the rulers within companies and in, in organizations, they're doing work. They're driven. They're working hard. They're diligent in their business. And that's how they get to those positions. It says, but the slothful shall be under tribute. The slothful, the lazy person is always going to be just under tribute, doing work for other people, not getting, you know, your own stuff, but you're just going to be working for other people all the time. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to work for somebody else, but being under tribute means you're, being, you're the one being taxed, you're the one being oppressed, and things like that. And the slothful person doesn't do anything about it. Jump down to verse number 27. The Bible reads, The slothful man roasteth not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. Now, we're going to tie this in with Proverbs 18, verse 9, because th they, they go hand in hand. But what that's saying there is the lazy person, the slothful man, it says here, so they've taken something in hunting, but it says he doesn't roast it. He's not doing anything with it. Why? Because it requires extra work. We could, we could talk to our resident hunter, right, Mr. Miller, and ask him, you know, the, the, the difference between the hunting part, where you're sitting in your blind, or you're up in your tree stand, that's not a lot of work, is it, in general? I mean, there's a little bit of work involved, maybe setting up your blind or setting up the tree stand, but, but once you get out there, you're kind of just sitting around, right? You're waiting for your opportunity, pulling back a bow or aiming your gun or whatever. That's not a lot of work. The work comes in when it's time to start hauling the meat out and start preparing it and dealing with it and everything else. That's when the real work starts. And the slothful man, he doesn't roast that which he took in hunting. But the substance of a diligent man is precious. 
So a diligent man is obviously the opposite of the slothful person. And the diligent person, they care about what they do. It's precious. We, we went over precious when we we're talking about Jesus Christ last week and, and you know the blood of Christ and things like that. It's of high price. Well, the substance of a diligent man, someone who's actually paying attention, they're gonna it's all gonna have value to them. Why? Because you're putting your hands to do some work, and the work of your own hands should be precious to you. Whatever it is that you do, you ought to be diligent in the things that you do and, and work as if you're serving the Lord, and everything that you do should be done because your time is precious. What you do should be precious. It should be valuable. It shouldn't just be eh, whatever. And here's the thing. When it's not precious, you end up being a big waster. When you don't hold in regard, when you're not holding value and you start becoming slothful in what you do and just kind of being lazy and cutting corners and saying, well, that's too hard, whatever. I just shot this deer. Hey, it's cool. I'm going to take a picture of it. And, oh, man, well, I don't know how to deal with that now. <laughs> that was fun. And leave it for someone else. The slothful person, is, you know, and then they're not going to reap from that either. They're not going to reward from that. But the, 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 the substance of a diligent man is precious. It matters. Verse number 9 in Proverbs 18, the Bible says, He also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. And, and look, this is, this is a, a point, again, that I think it hit home with many of us to do a better job of being diligent in our work and not getting lazy. Because once you start getting lazy with things, you're going to start being this great waster. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. You know, God, if God's blessed you with, with whatever he's blessed you with, wherever you are, whatever he's given to you, you know, the things he's given to you, he's entrusted that to you. Yeah. Let's not have this great wasting mindset because we're too lazy to just get things done. When you eat meals and you've got still plenty of good food sitting there, you know, yeah, you know what? It takes work then to go get it all back together and, and, and care for it and store it and, and make sure it doesn't go bad. It, you know, you have to be diligent about that. Because if you just leave things out too long, then no, it's going to be good for nothing. But then you know what you're doing? You're wasting what God has blessed you with. You're wasting that substance because it's not precious to you at all. Just like, yeah, well, whatever. And you can continue to be that waster, but you know what? What's going to happen when you become lazy and you don't deal with things and you just become a big waster? It's going to bring you to poverty. And that's another outcome of being lazy. Turn, if you would, in Proverbs to uh, chapter 24. Proverbs 24. This is one of the end results of laziness. You become this great waster. You don't care about the things that you're doing. You don't care about it, whatever. That's just too much work. Well, Proverbs 24, verse number 30, the Bible reads, I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. So here's a man that's a slothful man. He owns a field. He owns a vineyard. And look what happens to it. Verse 31 says, And lo, it was all grown over with thorns, and nettles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. So when you're too lazy to take care of things and to get things done, what's going to happen is you're going to end up becoming poor. You're going to be just driven to poverty because you're not willing to work. The Bible says there's, you know, there's profit. In, in all labor, there's profit. And we need to remember that and not get too lazy to do the work that God has for us. Now, even in just a physical sense, you know, why is this person going to come to poverty? Well, he's got a vineyard. He's got a field. He's got, he's got this source that God's blessed him with to be able to, to provide for himself, to provide for his family. But you know what? He'd rather take a nap. Because, you know, plowing that ground is work. Taking care of all those weeds and making sure that, that it doesn't get overrun so I could actually use it, so it could actually produce for me, that takes work. That takes time. I'd rather just take a nap. I'd rather just fold my hands, take some sleep, because who wants to do that? 
Well, yeah, go ahead. Don't do it, but then don't be surprised when you come to poverty because you're not willing to work. And look, it's, it's not just with physical things. You could apply it. I mean, think about anything. The work that you do when you go to a job, when you're at home, you got things to do. You start cutting corners because you don't want to do things right. You're going to end up suffering for it in the end. And you know what the biggest problem is? The biggest problem is going to be with your children. You, can, you might be able to say, you know what, I don't really care about this thing at all. It's not precious because it's just something, it's just some object, it's just some tool, and we're going to use this temporarily, and it's going to go by the wayside, so I'm not, I want to invest all of my time into that. Understood, right? I could, I could get that way of thinking. But your children are not things like that. So it may be okay to cut corners in certain areas and some things where you say, well, it's not that big of a deal, right? For me, an example would be like, you know, our van, we've got paint peeling all over the place on that because it's a Chevy. And apparently for that year, they just were horrible at their, their formula, whatever they did with the paint, right? So all the vans you see like that, they're all just got paint peeling all over the place. Now there's a purpose for that. If we want to care for it and take care of it, we don't want it rusting out. We're going to need to take care of that. Otherwise, it's just going to decay and get destroyed, right? But you could see yourself going, you know what? I don't really care about the aesthetics of it, though. To me, it doesn't matter how pretty it looks. So I could just cut a corner and maybe not make it look quite as nice, but it'll get the job done and, and it'll keep it uh, um, around longer, right? I don't think there's any problem necessarily with that, but that's a physical object. That's something that's going to be destroyed anyways, right? But when it comes to your children and raising your children, you can't just leave them off and, and just ignore things that need to be dealt with and ignore problems and ignore teaching, ignore training because they're way more valuable and they should be more precious than anything. And they need that time. They need that instruction. Don't be lazy. And look, I know everything is hard work. Look, life is hard work. Life is hard work. If you're going to be successful at it. If you want to just, just be brought to poverty and brought to shame and, and end up having nothing, I don't know what to tell you. Then go the lazy path. You could be like the bums, you know, that don't want to have anything. I mean, there's people out there literally that want to be homeless because they don't want to work for anybody. They don't want to do anything. They just want to live and exist. And that's the life that they want. And they have nothing. And they have to beg. And they and they'd prefer to do that. And you know who they help? Nobody. What are they doing with their life and their existence? They're just trying to coast through and be lazy. But it doesn't work out. It, it's, it's funny. I mean, it's not funny, but it's funny in, in the sense that, you know, the very thing that the lazy person wants, flip over, if you would, uh, you're in chapter 24, look at chapter 26. The very thing that the lazy person wants is exactly what they don't get. Over and over, you see the slothful person, oh, just a little sleep, oh, I just want to take a nap, oh, I'm tired, oh, I want this. Lazy people have a tendency to always be tired and they can never get the rest they're looking for. Yeah. And I believe that's the way God designed it on purpose. You say, oh, you're going to be lazy? You think you just want more and more? To it, it gets to the point where no matter how much rest they're getting, it's just still like never enough. And they're always just tired and they're always, oh man, I can't do anything now. Because you've let yourself get in that trap. The Bible says in verse 14 in chapter 26 in Proverbs, As the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. It says the lazy person just could be tossing back and forth. You can never get any sleep. You have a problem not being able to sleep. You have a problem just tossing and turning. You know what? Maybe you're being lazy. Maybe you need to work a little bit harder. The Bible says in verse 15, The slothful hideth his hand in his bosom. It grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth. He's so lazy. It's just like, I don't even want to exert the energy to feed myself. <laughs> verse 16, The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. The problem with the sluggard is that also they're, they're, they're conceited. It's harder for them to 
receive the instruction um, because they think they've got it all figured out. This life is temporary. Don't be afraid to do the work. And you know what? If you, if you really want rest that bad, work really hard. The harder you work, the better your rest is going to be. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. You want to get a good night's sleep? Work really hard. You guaranteed sleep. I'm telling you, people have sleep. You know, I, I sleeping pills and things like that shouldn't even exist. You know why they exist? They exist for lazy people. That's right. They exist for lazy people. If you do enough work, your body will say, "I need to sleep." And you'll get the rest, but it comes at the price of doing work. Laying around on the couch all day or on the bed all day and then expecting to be able to sleep at night, that's not going to work. Yeah. You didn't do anything. Your body doesn't need the rest. So it's not going to let you rest. But lazy people don't want to ever do anything. Let's not let ourselves get to that point. And, you know, honestly, the end result of, of laziness, another end result, flip back to Proverbs 21. One of the problems with, with slothful people is they end up becoming covetous and wanting things but when you're not willing to do anything for them and you just want things that you can't have, that's covetous. You end up desiring all this stuff, but you're not willing to work for it, then you're covetous. Verse 25 in, in Proverbs 21, the Bible reads, The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. The lazy person just, no. I'm not going to work. I don't want to do it. But they have desires still. They still want things. Verse 26, He coveteth greedily all the day long, but the righteous giveth and spareth not. Notice the, the complete opposite mindset. The slothful person they just want more things for themselves. Why? Because being lazy is also self-centeredness. Like all sin. All sin is self-centeredness. You're thinking about your own lusts, your own cravings, your own desires, and how you can fulfill that lust. Laziness is just, well, I want my body to never have to feel any pain or experience any discomfort. Right? So I'm just going to kick back, take it easy, and, and not have to deal with that. And this is why I brought up kids, because, you know, we, we went, um, after we came back from our trip, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that, that kids are demanding. They need your attention to raise them properly. And, you know, after getting done doing a bunch of work, I kind of feel like I don't want to do anything else but just... Take a nap or relax, but you know what? I've got a bunch of children. And they need things. And they need to be raised right. So you know what you got to do as a parent? Sometimes even when you're already been working, even when you're already tired and exhausted, you keep going. And you do more. Because that's the right thing to do because it's not all about you. I mean, imagine, imagine, that's why, I mean, like, a pastor can never be a lazy person. Anyone who's looking to try to be a pastor, if you're going to do it the right way and not just be interested in money and not just want to fleece people and, and have a cush job. See, some people get into, into the clergy for the wrong reasons because they think like, oh man, I'm going to be on easy street. I mean, what do I got to do? I just got to, and usually they're talking about churches where they, they only have like Sunday morning service. So there's only like one sermon. So I only got to work for like a couple hours a week. 
Like, that's awesome. And other people are just going to give me money and I just have, you know. Look, if you want to just lie to people and swindle people, then you're a crook. And yeah, there's many ways to do that. Unfortunately, some people choose to, to claim to, to believe the Bible and teach the Bible and, and be a crook that way. But I'll tell you what, if I was going to be a crook, I would not want to bring God into it at all. People should be trembling at that. No, if you want to do a job like this, it's not for the money. And I'll tell you what, if you want to do the job the right way, it requires a lot of work. You cannot be lazy. I mean, imagine if I just showed up and said, yeah, you know what? I was busy this week, so I, I didn't really prepare anything. I just got too busy. Sorry, I we'll sing some songs and then we'll go home. Maybe we'll read a chapter of the Bible and, and that's enough. Would that be a church that you want to go to? Because <laughs> I know I wouldn't. I don't want to show up and just have the guy going like, yeah, well, oh, well, sorry. No, you need to take ownership. We need to take responsibility. We can't be lazy about things. You need to do them. And, you know, one of the biggest obstacles to getting things done are excuses. Turn, if you would, to Proverbs 26. Are you in Proverbs? No. Yeah, go back to Proverbs 26. Because overcoming excuses is critical to overcoming laziness. Proverbs 26, verse 13, the Bible reads, The slothful man saith, there is a lion in the way. A lion is in the streets. What that's implying there is he's saying like, oh, I can't, I mean, I can't leave the house. I mean, there's a lion. I mean, you can't, ex come on, you can't really expect me to go out of the street, out of the street when there's a lion out there that's going to devour me, Right? The slothful person will always find an excuse not to get things done. Yeah. I mean, hey, it's COVID, man. Yeah. I can't go out anywhere and do anything. You can't expect me. Are you, you really think you expect me to, to go out and, and do work when people are, could be carrying a disease everywhere with them? Pfft. Sorry. No, you got to work. Right. Okay, and then there's always going to be an excuse. There's always going to be something that can come up. And I'm sure if you think back, even in your own mind, you're going to be thinking, well, I need to, you know, like, I can't do this because whatever. And it's, and it's just ultimately a lazy thought. Even just carnal things, even just things that, that aren't really that big of a deal. Think about like, like just physically working out. Right? There's always an excuse not to do it. And they're not always good reasons. Now, there may be some reason, you know, like something else comes up and you got to go to war. You got to deal with something that's a higher priority than that. That's not laziness. But if you've got something that you're planning on doing and you're just like, well, I know I already got seven hours of sleep or eight hours of sleep or whatever. But instead of getting up and going and doing this work, I'm just going to sleep a little like I get nine or ten hours of sleep. And that's, that's what I'm going to do instead. That's laziness, right? Or whatever, right? There's, there's so, many things, so many ways that we can be lazy. And we need to watch out for just making up excuses for not getting things done. And, you know, everyone's in a different situation. Everyone's in a different position, especially when it comes to physical tasks, right? Uh, and turn, turn, if you would, real quick to Romans chapter 12. Here's the deal. Some people may, have, may be experiencing more levels of pain or maybe in, in you know, other situations than, than others, right? Some people are in better health than others. Some people are in better physical condition than others. So it's not our job necessarily to be looking at other people going, oh man, that person's lazy, especially if you don't know their situation. They may be dealing with other burdens at the time. But here's the thing. You know yourself, and you need to be able to push yourself to what you can do. And you don't have to worry about what other people are thinking. But just because something hurts or doesn't feel good, you shouldn't just stop. Now, obviously, if you're just like completely injured, 
That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about someone like, you broke your leg. It's like, no, just keep walking anyways or whatever. Like, okay, let your body heal. Recover. Okay, I'm not getting that extreme on you. But my, my point is this. My point is this. All work is going to be uncomfortable. Amen. Right? Everything that you do. Amen. And kids, you know, if you start doing physical activities and stuff, if you want to succeed, you know, you can't just stop at the first little bit of pain. Oh, I'm getting out of breath. Oh, I've got this little pain in my side. Push through it. Okay, work through it. And no matter what it is you're doing, you know, you've got a lot of stairs to go up and down. You're carrying things. You're doing it. Just push and work through it. <laughs> Work through it. I had you turn to Romans chapter 12. Because here's the thing. Laziness, like so many things, it's ultimately a matter of will. It's all up here. You have different factors that are going to be tugging at you from your flesh to not do things. But everybody is capable of not being lazy. Amen. And it all has to do with your decisions of are you going to do it or not. That's right. right. Amen. Yeah. Where is your priority? What is important to you? You decide whether you're going to do it or not. All y'all uh, decided to come back to church this evening after you came to the morning service and after you went out soul winning all afternoon. Hey, that requires work. There's labor going out, walking up and down the streets, knocking on doors, talking to people, preaching the gospel. That's work. And coming back to sit through a, a sermon on laziness, right? <laughs> I should have preached this in the morning sermon instead of an evening sermon. <laughs> but it's, it's up to you to decide, am I going to do this? Or is it too much? Right? You can look around and see, like, well, why is it? It's not too much for everyone else. Then why is it too much for you? How about getting up in the morning and just, just coming to church? And I, I'm, I thank God for our church. I'm, I'm not even preaching this because I think that there's some problem. But you know what? I want to stave off this problem of laziness because we're not going to be able to accomplish the things that we want to do next year if we allow ourselves to get lazy. Just not going to happen. But I've known so many men in this church personally that have been very living very good examples of hard workers. People have worked multiple jobs, have still showed up to do things with church and been faithful, reliable, and dependable, coming maybe right after an overnight shift and then showing up to preaching classes and doing other things and going soul winning and still putting forth the effort. You know what? Amen and amen. And those are the people you want to look to for examples and look to and say, you know what? If they can do it, I can do it. Engage yourself at least along the lines of if you see someone doing a lot of work, say, you know what, maybe, am I getting, any, am I getting lazy? Can I do a little bit more? Right? And, and look, I'm not saying this to turn it around saying, oh, call that person lazy. It's just for yourself to motivate you. See what can be done. Look at good examples. Uh, you know, for me personally, I'm always looking at what Pastor Anderson's doing going like, man, does he ever sleep? Because he gets so much done. It's, and that's great. You know what? I want to do more. Right. And it's a good motivator to see someone else who can say like, man, you're putting out documentaries. You're doing all these soul winning events. You're, you know, there's a lot of work involved in that. And I know just as much as anyone, at least, if not more, how much work is involved in doing a lot of the things that are done over there. It's a lot of work. Getting things done takes time and it takes effort. But you know what? It's worth it. It's worth it. If we're going to do anything great, we need to all pull together and work hard. I do turn to Romans chapter 12. As I mentioned, you know, it's, it's, it's in your mind. You got to, it's a matter of will. Are you going to do things or not? And hopefully some of the things that will help you decide not to be lazy, especially when it comes to spiritual things, is understanding the priorities and, and what God says about what we ought to be doing. Right? When you realize, hey, God's commanding us to do all this stuff, you start realizing, that looks like a lot of work. But God's still saying to do it. So there's no room for being lazy when God's commanding us to do things. Look at Romans 12, verse number 9. The Bible says, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business. 
fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality, bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not, rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. There's lots of things going on here, and just inherently, if you're going to be distributing this necessity of saints, and giving to hospitality, and blessing people who persecute you, and rejoicing with them that rejoice, and weeping with them that weep, you know what you're going to have to be involved in people's lives. I mean, it's just, you just have to be involved with them to even know that these things are going on. And that's going to require some work, even just maintaining relationships with people. And that's only a few of the things Mr. mentioned there. You know, specifically, even in verse number 11, it says, not slothful in business. Busyness. Busyness. Being busy. Not being idle. Don't be lazy in your business. All these things require you to do something. Doing. And you know what's going to prevent you from being these things, doing these things? Laziness. Wasting your time, kicking up your feet, just a little bit of, of a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. We need to be prioritized. And that's just one small list. Obviously, we can just go on and on and on throughout Scripture of all the things that we're, we should be doing. We see the examples of the Apostle Paul who labored night and day, traveling, you know, working a day job, as well as preaching the gospel and doing all these things as an example to those believers that they should work hard as well. That you can get it all done. You can serve the Lord and be able to provide enough for you and your family. It can be done. You can do all those things, but you know what? It requires work. It requires sacrifice. Turn to Hebrews chapter 12. And at the end of the day, at the end of your life, and at the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there's going to be a judgment seat, the judgment seat of Christ, where all of your works are going to be tried. And if you end up being lazy in this life, hey, if you're a believer, your soul is saved, yeah. amen, you're going to heaven. Nothing's going to change that. But what a shame it would be for, the, for, that, for all that time you got to spend on your couch, spend in your bed, getting all the sleep in the world that you could possibly want, and then standing before Jesus Christ and going, whoa, wow, it looks like I totally wasted my life. Because I was lazy. And I didn't care about others, and I didn't care about anything other than just gratifying my flesh. He's going to look, He's going to reward based on your labor. We need to work. If we're going to do a good, a good job for the Lord, we need to work. I've mentioned a lot of my ambitions for 2021 this morning. But in order to get those things done, laziness has to be our enemy. Today we turn to Hebrews 12. Look at verse number 1. The Bible reads, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. So what he's talking about here is this great race. In, in verse number one, he's saying, you know, let's lay aside every weight. Because think about it, you want to run a race, you want to run real fast, you don't want to be weighted down with anything. You don't want to have extra baggage. You want to be carrying a backpack you know, full of a bunch of stuff when you're, when you're running a race. Because it's going to slow you down. 
which is why he's comparing that with the race. And he's saying, the sin which doth so easily beset us. So the more sin you have, the more baggage you have, the harder it's going to be to run the Christian race and to succeed and to, and to win, right? You want to win the race. Well, the more sin you've got, the harder it's going to be. Well, I would submit also then, the, the more lazy you are, the less in shape you're going to be to win, to, to run this race. Yeah. I mean, if you're lazy, you're just going to be like, I don't even want to race. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like work. I don't want to race. I just want to sit down and relax. You can't win if you're not running. How can you expect? I mean, you're not even going to get a participation trophy. <laughs> the lazy person gets nothing. I mean, at least get the participation prize. <laughs> Get the t-shirt or something. Run the race. Give it your best. Give it your all. And, and you know, parents, your children learn from you. More than anyone else. More than the pastor at church. More than, the, you know, some teacher at school. If you send them off to school. More than anyone else. They're going to learn from you. They're with you more time out of the day than anyone else. They're, you're the parents. They look up to you. Be the example for them. You start cutting corners and being lazy at home, guess what they're going to start doing? They're going to grow up to do the same exact things. Because they see you doing it. If that's what mom and dad do, then that's what I'm going to do. Show them by example. Show them that, you know what, as Christians, we're going we're gonna to work and serve as if we're serving Jesus Christ himself. We're going you know, the, the, to we're gonna be diligent so that the substance that we deal with is precious to us. Hey, I'm spending my time on this. Hey, I'm investing in this. Let's treat it like it's valuable. And ultimately, especially when it comes to serving the Lord, when it comes to our praying, our Bible reading, our soul winning, our church attendance, you know, the righteous living, let's not be lazy with any of it. And thank God, I, you know, you guys aren't. I don't feel like I'm. You know, I, I need to do. You know, maybe maybe someone's got some secret thing going on, and and you know, you've got some laziness in your life. And hopefully, you get that corrected today. But I, I love the zeal, and I don't want it to fade. And I'll tell you what, you guys that are that are plugging away and plugging away, and especially those, you know, there's a lot of people that are driving long distances to be here. It's an encouragement to others. It, it's an encouragement to me. Anytime we go out and, and drive to one of these places and we go and visit people or whatever, and we're going like, man, this is a long drive. It's a long drive just to do one time. And it's a long drive that people are doing every single week without fail, coming day, you know, week in, week out, and traveling to be here. You know what? That's an encouragement to me. So thank you for that. It's encouragement, hopefully encouragement to other people. And that's just one small thing. How about coming out, you know, participating, helping, cleaning, soul winning, you know, all of it. It all matters. Amen. And when everybody's participating and being diligent in our work here, we can all do that much more. Yep. And relieve some of the burden from other people when it's kind of distributed really well also. Instead of one person just having to do everything. I'm excited for the year. Amen. Amen. I hope you are too. I don't know what it is that motivates you. Find what it is in God's Word that's going to motivate you. Right? Some people get motivated just by not being chastened by the Lord. <laughs> I don't want to deal with that, so I'm just going to do what's right. Some people are going to be looking at the rewards going, you know what? I'm going to plan ahead. I'm going to be, you know, I want to be diligent in my inheritance, in my rewards for the work that I do in this life, man, I'm not so worried about laying up all the finances. I'm going to be worried about what I'm going to have when I breathe my last breath because this life is short. Whatever it is, or you just say, you know what, I just love God and I'm thankful. I'm thankful that, that He saved my soul. That's huge. So whatever it is He has for me to do, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to be lazy about it. Or maybe you love people and you go, you know what, I, don't, I, I know the, 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 this is the right way. And I'm going to share that with people. I don't want people going to hell. And I also don't want them just stumbling and being snared and entrapped in sin and everything else. Hey, look, this is what God's Word says. This is going to help you. It's going to give you a better life. 
Figure out your motivation. Maybe it's all of them. I hope so. Use that the next time you're feeling like, oh, I don't really want to do this. Oh, man, a soul winning marathon again. Oh, man, I, you know, whatever. Whatever it is that motivates you, use that to prioritize in your life. And again, if you're, if you're not doing like the absolute most, I'm not saying you're lazy. That's not, what, that's not where I'm trying to go with this. We're trying to push real hard, but make sure you don't allow yourself to slip into laziness and just become someone who's just not doing anything. Because that's the slothful. The slothful comes from the, from the, the sloth animal, right? The, the phrase, or someone being slothful, someone being sloth-like. The sloth moves really, really, really slow as an animal. Right, it's interesting. I was read, I was going to do some little thing and read for you about the about the sloth. I think most people already know that, right? And if you don't, kids, if you don't know, if you've never seen a sloth before, uh, look it up and have your parents get you know show you. They're they're cool animals. They're really cool, but man, they 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 don't consume very much. They're very unique animals for mammals because for their size and everything else, they just, their body operates, everything operates really, really, really slowly. And they hardly, they don't eat much and they just eat enough to, to barely sustain their limited movements and stuff. And it's, but they don't really accomplish anything at all. They exist. It's an interesting animal. And in, in the Bible, that's, it's, it's something there to provide us with wisdom. Don't be like the sloth. Let's bow our eyes have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for uh, your words, the words of wisdom. God, I pray that you please help us to um, fight against the, the flesh, to fight against the laziness that wants to creep in and... and, and um, cause us not to not to be diligent in all that we do and especially in our service to you dear lord obviously there's some things of this world that that ultimately may not matter much at all but when it comes to serving you lord help us to be diligent help us to to be very diligent in our study of, of your word and and that you'd increase our knowledge and help us to um, prioritize our lives to to serve you better lord i thank you for Everyone that you brought together here in our church, we pray that you would please uh, build our church, grow our church, help us to reach more people. Um, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.